so Joe. Boston Celtics back to 500 after a big win against the Cleveland Cavaliers last night. Iso Joe, the return 20 years later after the team that actually drafted him pick him back up on a 10-day contract. And maybe there is a silver lining to all the health and safety protocols. Let's review, guys. Good morning, afternoon, evening, night. Jags to riches, James Peter, straight to it. A very merry, or what is it, happy Christmas Eve Eve. Boston Celtics with a big win last night against the Cleveland Cavaliers, 111 to 101. Huge game from Jalen Brown. Uh, return of, you know, Joe Johnson 20 years later. Uh, we're going to quickly review the box score, then I'll go over some of my takeaways from the game. We'll obviously touch on Joe Johnson, and then at the end, I'm just going to talk about, you know, just some of the um, the benefits of having all of the um, the players that have been missing time. You know, last I checked, just in December, it was over 100 already players, you know, in health and safety protocol, and that is actually getting to see some of these old school players actually getting opportunities again, but... um straight to it guys looking at the Cavs game again 111 to 101 this got the Cavs, uh, excuse me the Celtics back to 16 wins 16 losses we're now back in the eighth seed and if you actually look at it guys the Wizards Sixers Celtics and Hornets all have 16 wins that's pretty much from six to nine in the seeding now there are different losses but pretty much you know like I said the Celtics have 16 you're basically looking at 15, 16, or 17 losses in between those teams. So that's how close it is, you know. But <clears throat> showing love to the visiting team right off the bat. Darius Garland is a stud, man. 28 points, 6 assists. I mean, that, that, that boy is... He's bad, man, and I only think he's, what, 20, 21 years old? He, that kid is special, a really special team. And matter of fact, I'm a big fan of this Cleveland team. When they're healthy, Garland, Sexton, Rubio, and then you're talking about in the front court with Mobley and Jared Allen, and then you've got Mark and him coming off the bench. You've got Kevin Love. I mean, you've got Osman. They've got a pretty solid, you know, rotation, too. Um, damn, oh, Okoro. So, speaking of which, Kevin Love, man, throwback game. 23 minutes off the bench. He had 18 points, 12 rebounds, and Seti Osman. You've heard me talk about him and the potential Schroeder trade. He played 31 minutes, had 13 points, 6 rebounds off the bench. Moving on to the Celtics tonight. Jalen Brown, uh, 34 points, 6 rebounds, 3 assists, 12 for 22 from the field. He was 5 for 10 from 3, 50%. Rob Williams, 21 points, 11 rebounds, 7 assists, 2 steals, 2 blocks. He was 10 for 12 from the field. Um, some of the other key takeaways, I mean, Jason Tatum, 18 points. He was 6 for 19 shooting, 2 for 8 from the 3, um, 5 assists, 9 rebounds, 2 steals. Again, a lot of players missing time, no Al, you know, no Grant. So Romeo Langford getting the start. He actually had 11 points with 9 rebounds plus 18. Um, off the bench, <clears throat> Peyton Pritchard again, guys. This is going to be his third straight game, getting 20 plus minutes. So 20 plus minutes, like I said, seven rebounds, or excuse me, seven points, five rebounds. Um, and then, of course, as you've seen in the opening, Joe Johnson getting two minutes there at the end, one for one. Obviously, two points, man. Um, we'll get to him a little bit later on, but <clears throat> excuse me as I transition back over. All right, so some of my key takeaways, guys. Right now, Jalen Brown, as you can see in this chart, 
since returning from his hamstring injury, he has been climbing after each game, guys, just getting better and better. Consecutive games now where he's actually scored 30 plus points. He had 35 and 4 against the Sixers. Following that up against the Cavs with 34-6. Like I said again, 50% from three, 12 for 22 from the field. Rob Williams, you had a pretty slow start from him. But as you see here, he actually finished with a career high in points. Ended up with near a triple-double. 21 points, 11 rebounds, 7 assists. And like I said, it two steals, two blocks. Marcus Smart has been concerning me, guys. Um, his stats in the month of... November compared to December or you know really starting to decline he had four points he was one in for seven from the field one for four from three and if you look at his month in November guys he was averaging nearly 13 points like six assists he was shooting like 32 or 33 percent you know but it is Marcus but so far this month he's averaging more like nine points five assists and he's shooting like 26 or 27 percent so he is actually decreasing across the board and it's very sporadic you'll see him like having and i think the 11 games they played this month he's had i think six games where he has scored six points or less and then i also think it was five or six games where he essentially had you know four assists or less he had multiple four assist games a three assist a two assist a zero assist second consecutive month where he's had a zero assist game tatum is currently on like a three game skid he scored, like I said, 18 points this game. His last game, I actually think he scored like around 19 or 17, something along those lines in the Sixers game. Uh, right now, if you look at his shooting, that pretty much tells me everything I need to know. Uh, this game right here, 24%. Or in during this skid, if you look, he's been shooting around the mid-30s from the field, below 24% from three. On the season, he is normally a 39 to 40% three-point shooter. He's only shooting 32% from three this year. And his stats are pretty much the same, guys. They're right around 25, you know, 26 points. So imagine him just actually shooting well. So again, any other takeaways from that game? It was the fact that they actually snapped the Cavs' six-game winning streak. And actually speaking of winning streaks, Perk made a fantastic point where he said, when is this team actually going to put together a winning streak? I mean, for Christ's sakes, the Houston Rockets had like, what, a seven game winning streak. And the Celtics are always right in that spot where if they were to go on a four or five, six game winning streak, they would be right up in the top three of the East, you know, because I just told you, but six to nine, it's a, it's a, you know, a mess. So, um, it's a, you know, it is what it is, guys. It's a big win. We'll take it. So far this month of December, they've got five wins to six losses. Coming up on Christmas Day, Saturday, they got the Bucks going to Milwaukee. And then after that, Timberwolves on the 27th, followed by the Clippers coming to home, coming to Boston on the 29th. And then the last game of the year will be home, the 31st against the Suns. Now, Joe Johnson, ISO Joe. Now, quickly, I'll just pull up his stats. Who is Joe Johnson, guys? 40 years old, two or three, you know, six, seven, 240, played in the year. I mean, how many years did this man play in the league, <laughs> right? Came in the league 01, 2001, 2002. He was actually drafted by the Boston Celtics, played 48 games with them before being traded to Phoenix and actually played with Phoenix for several years. A lot of you will probably remember him for his run in Atlanta. That's kind of when he took off, went on that all-star run, you know, played with Brooklyn, some strong years, and then he kind of bounced around Miami, Utah. Um, but as you see, career points, 16. He's like a 16, four and four guy. But I mean, at the point, at the heights of his career, like in Atlanta, you can see it right here, guys, 25 points. Um, where is it? Assist and rebounds, probably around six, right? Uh, 25 four and four but as you see right here in three man there was a season look at this three point percentage right here is last year in phoenix 47 percent from three i almost feel like i'm reading that wrong on four and a half attempts multiple years he shot over 40 percent from three career 37 percent guy i mean look at his run here in atlanta 25 points a game 21 22 21 19 18 but the year i really want to talk about that I remember him the most is this year right here, 0405 with the Phoenix Suns, right? 23 years old, as you see right here, averaged 17 points, five rebounds, four, no, th yeah, four assists, and that's the year he was shooting 47% from three. 
the reason that is special and symbolic to me guys is i'm right now i'm 30 right early 30s and that to me was a time where a lot of you will think of even if you're not a fan of golden state you you probably have loved watching them when they were on that run it was just exciting basketball right well for me that is who phoenix was back then guys that's you're talking about that's back when i'm in like middle school right you know just coming up so it's like that was when they had just that that last year of his in phoenix that was when they had just gotten steve nash yes the brooklyn nets coach they had just gotten steve nash they had joe johnson they had quentin richardson they had sean marion and they had amari stoudemire guys so they were that was and that's when mike d'antonio that was the and they had leandro barbosa rajah bell guys like that actually coming off the bench but that was when that seven seconds or less started so you would have steve nash and that was when he averaged like 15 16 points like 12 assists 11 or 12 assists shot 40 plus from three he would grab the ball sprint down the court either shoot a three or more than likely a pick and roll with amari stoudemire stoudemire guys oh man he was at 26 27 points nine or ten rebounds before injuries man he was an absolute freak of nature i mean he's one of my favorite players of all time joe johnson you just seen he was averaging 17 points they had quentin richardson who was like their three-point specialist corner specialist he was averaging like 15 16 points five or, or six attempts from three i think if, you know mid to high 30 percent you had sean merriman and a marion excuse me another one averaging i think like 18 19 points 10 11 rebounds he was like a um kind of a point four he was a swiss army knife type forward think of like an al horford just a little bit more elusive and quicker but you know him as probably having the most awkward shot shot of all time so that was an absolute just fun team i feel like it was an injury to amari that derailed that team because remember that was right after the lakers finished that incredible three-year run because that was the year detroit won it then the next year it was the spurs then it was the heat so it was kind of a mess like at that time so a lot of people thought phoenix really had it but unfortunately after that year you know joe they performed so good all of them you heard the stats i just named like joe obviously got the big contract in atlanta quentin richardson he left i don't know where he ended up maybe the clippers or orlando he ended up leaving to get money too amari dealt with his injuries and but i mean that was the start of steve nash two you know back-to-back -back mvp run there and that was just such a fun exciting incredible team so it joe johnson is an absolute star legend i mean if you're in like your late 20s early 30s you know or you know i should say if you're in your late 20s or you know beyond you probably remember joe like it was yesterday man if you remember those phoenix years and i'm sure the atlanta years it was really special man that iso joe if you needed those buckets man he was just an incredible as good of a scorer as you get if you need some point score just give him the ball and he will actually make it happen guys um it's a shame you know the celtics got rid of him because it wasn't too much longer after that that he started taking off with phoenix you're talking two to three years later he was you know i mean averaging 17 points and then the rest is history so i believe he's what seven time all-star something along those lines right what is he yeah seven time all-star he's in 2009 2010 all nba he was an all rookie and that was the year he was actually drafted by the celtics uh, from Arkansas, played high school ball in Arkansas, played college ball in Arkansas. It was very nostalgic and just incredible for someone like me just to see that. And speaking of which, as much as this health and safety protocol has been a nightmare, you know, you're losing six, seven, eight players at a time. You never know if the season's going to go on hiatus at any point. But the one silver lining, especially for me, is it is just incredible to see some of these players getting these opportunities again guys i'm talking about seeing ice t isaiah thomas get coming back you know joe johnson lance stevenson um cj miles i recently heard uh, mario chalmers and um oh man who else um quentin richardson i heard him oh jamal crawford i mean guys like that just being able to hear those names and you know see them again like think of how incredible that was that joe johnson moment and it kind of is a little disappointing because we were that close to probably re-signing Isaiah Thomas. And I wasn't always for that just because it, you know, I won't get too much into it. But 
in this time right now especially with everyone out it really would you know be a boost and it, you know it's kind of like a why not you've got to sign all kind of random players anyways you know signing cj miles and joe johnson so i was kind of you know wanting to see it come in on one of those 10 days and by the way these are 10 day hardships i believe what they're called they do not count against the cap um and you're basically seeing all kinds of guys getting picked up, man. So like I said, if there's any silver lining or any, you know, thing that is a positive from this, it is that. But um, Jags to Riches, James Peters, guys, I'm not going to take up too much more of your time. Trust the podcast, episode nine. We actually have it confirmed for tomorrow, Friday, Christmas Eve. I believe it's at either 1015 or 1030. I'll actually um, have it tweeted out. It'll be on all my socials. So check into that to actually see the official time it'll be on be smooth dnt and we will have our uh, special guest will be ev uh, guy boston sports so um appreciate you ev i'm very excited to have you on brother so please guys you know come in we'll be streaming it, it'll be exciting it'll be the second to last episode of the year i hope you all have an incredible christmas eve an incredible christmas and an excellent conclusion to your week guys thank you so much for your time take care